Hi everyone, welcome back to Live Darts. We are here at the City West in Dublin and we've dragged none other than Keith Dadda to the couch for a chat. Keith, so far it's been a tournament of excitement, drama and upsets as of last night. I think the first round that all the players are very nervous. They're worried about losing the first set because there's only three sets and if you lose the first one you're in big trouble. And I just feel that they're, they're unsure about getting double away. I mean, when you think they're so good at hitting the doubles to win, you think they'd be OK getting away, but they... In their mind, they're thinking, oh, I didn't get away, have I lost a leg? And the other person doesn't get off, because they're trying too hard to make sure that they can get off to a good start. I just think they're all been very nervous, and uh, it's showing. But the ones you get through now, it is five sets, it is slightly better, but they've still got to come out of the traps. But again, it's still you know a tough format, because they're just a little bit unsure about the double away. When you've been spotted, have you been surprised how many of them haven't had a proper plan, where they're scratching all around the board? Well, they, they have. They say, well, if I don't hit that one very well, that double, say, 18, I'll go to 16s. Then when that's not going very well, they, they're going all over the place. I think there was one last night. It was 18, 16s, 11s. And I just feel that they've, um, they're panicking a lot. Instead of just standing back for, right, I've missed this time, let's just get away. I always say to the players, go for a double that you think you're brilliant at and stay on that. Forget the nine data. There's only been three ever in this format. Just get the double you like and get off. And, you know, that's what they should be doing. They keep going for double 20, well, because it's the biggest, bar apart from the bullseye, that's the best one to go for. But when I used to play um, double away, especially in America, double 14, because if you pull it, a little bit edgy, goes in double 11. Once you're away, you can start hurting your opponent. No score is no good to, to no one. I think it's fair to say in the first round, Michael Van Gogh looked edgy. And that one three five completely changed the complex of that game. And then what we saw last night, has it completely changed the context of him? Because he looked back to the old Michael Van Gogh in last night. It's nice to have a scare in the first round as long as you win. I mean, that was a great game for Michael to win because he was in big trouble. Um, Jamie Hughes, it, he was going for the nine data. He'd have been two legs up. He should have won that leg. He'd be then thrown for the match. The chances are Michael was going home. He come through that and he thought, well, that's a good game to win now. He relaxed more last night. He was brilliant last night. And now... I've mean, been able to respect to the other players, the top half now, it's there for Michael to come through comfortable. And really, he'd be, you know, very happy with the, the way the results have gone. He won't take anybody lightly. I mean, Mervyn King's playing lovely. Um, but at the end of the day, it's going to be hard for Michael to get beat now. So you've called Michael from the top half. Who gets through from the bottom? Oh, God. <laughs> well, you've got some really good games. I, I like the way Dave Chisnell played the other night. I thought he played brilliant. He looks really comfortable. He looked a lot more relaxed on stage. And uh, Dave wasn't pulling his body all over the place as much as he normally does. But uh, I thought Dave looked really good. I think Rob Cross against Glenn Durant will be a really good match. It's all what, Glenn, uh, to me, it's all what Rob Cross does. If Rob gets away well, I think he'll beat Glenn. So I just think he's more of a power scorer. So I've got a feeling. Peter Wright just quietly got through the other night. Didn't do anything brilliant, but Peter doesn't. He's an uh, experienced player now. But I, I can see Peter or Rob Cross coming through the bottom half and to play Michael. Obviously, you watch all the action the same as I do, just over halfway through the season. How would you assess the first half of the season? Well, I think there's players that are playing really well. I think Ratajski's played very well. Very good floor player. He has to improve to me on TV. Um, I think Michael Smith has been a very good player in all the big events. Michael's lost in the Premier League, the Worlds. To me, I think... He's such a fantastic dart player that if he can just, you know, tighten the game up more, I think he'll most probably be the biggest challenger, along with Rob Cross, for Michael. But there's players that are playing well. I think Glenn Durham's done really well. He's come from nowhere and he's going up the rankings all the time. Um, there's other players, unfortunately, that are not playing as well and they really have to look, look at themselves because they're very, you know, very erratic, which is no good for no one. Um, but again... You've got the wheels around the corner. I thought Gary in places this week looked really good, Gary Anderson. And the world is around the corner now. I mean, we've still got big events to come. You've got the European Championships, you've got the Grand Slam of Darts, the Players' Championship. They're all events that you want to do well in. I think the Grand Slam to me is the next real big one because you have the BDO guys and possibly girls in it. And uh, that's always a great event. Uh, but they're all, they're all got their mind on the worlds now. They're all thinking that it's important to get you know, you want to get a little bit of a run, even in some of these other events, just for your confidence. But I feel that uh, at the end of the day, to me, I think Rob Cross, Michael Smith, you know, uh, I think Go and Price is playing really well. 
obviously he lost the game the other day to Chizzy where he just didn't get away. But these other formats, you don't have to worry about the double away. And they're, they're, he's scoring really well. And I think he'll have a good uh, end of year. Just two points we want to touch on from things you made there. One, about people being patchy. Uh, certain players rely on their ability and maybe not putting the, the hard yards in they need to away from the TV. I think you're right. I think that players, they say that, oh, well, we're playing tournaments all the time. Yes, that's great for competitive edge, but you have to do the groundwork. And I think there's players that are relying on their natural ability, which is just not, not good enough anymore. The players now, like Aspinall, Nathan Aspinall, you can see these boys want it so much and they're putting the hard work in. I like um, De Sousa, De Sousa, how you yeah. pronounce it. Yeah. His interview the other day when he won, I'm on the dartboard every day. These guys want it now, and these are the ones that will get the results because they put the hard work in. You can't rely on reputations anymore. Because they're playing each other week in, week out, they're not bothered about who they play. In our day, we would have one tournament, then one maybe two months later. So if you're doing well, that, didn't, that mattered a lot. But now, week in, week out, they're playing each other, the fear factor's gone, and the ones who put the hard work in are the ones who are going to get the results. There's no point moaning when you've lost, or oh, I couldn't practice because this, or someone wasn't well, and all this rubbish. You know, end of the day, get on the practice board, do your homework, and if you do, you'll gain confidence from the practice board to take it on the stage. Second one was obviously about the slam and the, the BDO potential picks. You said potentially having the girls in there. If you were the BDO, would you put one, maybe two in? I'd maybe put the ladies world champion in, possibly, and I don't think I'd put any more in, and that's it's not a sexist remark. It's, the bottom line is we've got so many great players now on, on the circuit, I feel that should go to them more. I think the BDO um, element, I think that's, to me, is running its way, way a bit more now because when we were picking the BDO players, they were picking the best players like Glenn Durren, Martin Adams. These players were really good players that were the best players. Trouble is now they're leaving to come over here to the PDC. So you're go if you're going down the top eight, these some of these players are just not good enough to play in the Grand Slam. And I don't think really they, they should be in now. I think that uh, maybe they maybe need to cut that down to maybe four players from the BDO and four more spots go to the PDC because these players now are better. I always say, look, if you want to put more ladies in, let them go to the playoffs and take the boys on. If they come through, then fair enough. If they don't, then to me, I think one, the, the ladies' world champion should be in, possibly. I think they were talking about young Leighton Bennett. I think maybe it's just a fraction too early for me for Leighton. He's only four. They've got to remember the lad's only 14. Brilliant, brilliant player. Looks like a fantastic prospect. Future world champion, definitely. But I think that maybe, see, he's going to play in the BDO World Championships. I think that would be a good start for Leighton to play in that, to gain a little bit of experience on TV. Possibly next year, if he keeps doing what he's doing, that'd be great to see him. And I think we've, um, I think the BDO players, that the averages have got to come up. They can't be averaging 84, and that's their average for the season. Then they're playing in one of our biggest ranking events. So I just feel that the BDO players have got to step up now. Where well, the grandstand is now ranked, do you think it's getting to the point now where the BDO players shouldn't even be invited because it is a PDC ranked major where before it was an invitational event so it had that merit where you could invite them? I think it is questionable now when it's a ranking event. I feel that um, you know they should really be looking more at our system. I like It's a nice idea. It's been different. Look, Scott Waits won it. You know, you, you come across from the BDO. That was when it was at its prime. The qualifiers from then were, very, were really good and they could give the lads a game. But I feel now that, you know, we're getting to a stage now where our ranking system is so important for the players to make the big events and the Grand Slam is, is an event that's really big. I would like to see maybe um, it goes to a few more qualify, qualifying places uh, because the lads are supporting the circuit all year. But as I said, the BDO players have, have to step up with their averages in the next year or two if that's going to carry on like that. Just touching on the BDO area whilst we're talking about it, is it to the point now where the BDO is in danger of just not being able to compete full stop because the gap is probably bigger than it's ever been at the moment, isn't it? I agree. I think it is. Um, I think Jim Williams is a good player. Um, you know, it's a, it's, it's, they've got good players, but they're not used to playing in front of big crowds like they are in the PDC. I mean, when you see some of the tournaments, there's no one there. It's no good to the players. It's horrible. It's the worst thing to play in front of a crowd that's not there, really, because there's no atmosphere. 
So when they come over to the PDC, they're coming over to good crowds, and I think that's one of the problems they've got. And I just feel that it's... It, it, a few years ago, it was more exciting, and now I think the standard um, from the BDO is, is not as good because they're not playing under the same pressures week in, week out. When you look at some of the players that have come over, Mark Begrini, Greedy? Mark Begrini. I mean, Mark's a really good number one in the world. He's found it very hard this year in the PDC, and he was the world's number one at the time. The only one who's really come through well is Glenn Durham. So that just shows you how hard it is, and they're with the players that have been doing well the last few years. So I feel that, you know, it's... I mean, end of the day, if the PDC and, and, and Sky still like the system like that, then that, that's fine. But I think it's getting to the stage now where, as I said, players must start stepping up more. Obviously, Lake Side's gone as well, whilst we're on the PDC, BDO subject, the home of darts, they can move into the O2. Is that a risk? And I say this because, obviously, Lake Side was legendary and people bought tickets just to go back to Lake Side every year. And the capacity wasn't big. Now, they're going to the Indigo at the O2. We've seen they've struggled to sell tickets at all their other events and the Indigo is huge compared to anywhere else they've been. If that's not even half full, that's going to look horrendous on TV, isn't it, for their brand? I think they should have gone to the Circus Tavern, where we had the world's... The, the, you know, you don't have that, if you get 500 at the Circus Tavern, it would look really good, the crowd. They most probably would get six, 700 in at the Tavern. It's got a, you know, a mail and base where people would go along to watch. And I think that was a mistake from the BDO, they should have gone to... This. I know they're going there for the possibly the World Masters, but yeah, Masters to me, the World Championship should have been at the Circus Tavern, and I think that would have been a better venue for them, and they'd have got really good support, but as you say, it's it's going to be strange, not the lakeside. I mean, I only played there twice, so you know, it didn't have the same feelings for me as other players, but it was a really good venue. I mean, I used to go there once a year and, and really enjoy the evening and watching the players, but again, it's... You know, it's getting sponsorship, and you know they've. Obviously, I mean, uh, the owner of Lakeside, he's, he's always putting his own money in to sponsor the event. So I just think, at the end of the day, it seems like it's struggling, and it will struggle. The BDO will still struggle while they've got no one watching. I mean, the trouble is, people want to see the best players in the world. You come to the PDC, you see them at the the, the Sky events and ITV events. That's where you want to. Watch Dart. That's where you're going to see the best players. In comparison, jumping back to the PDC, obviously, the current crop coming through, the youngsters, are setting the standard really high as well. We've seen Chris Dover here this week, Nathan Aspinall this week, young Dimitri van der Berg as well. They are really setting the standard for years to come as well, aren't they? Exactly. I mean, there's going to be more come through. I mean, I like Max Hop the way he plays. Max, got a lovely throw, great image for our sport. A bit more killer, that's what he needs. He's, um, you know, I think the other night you could have gone one set up. I think he needs to improve in that respect to me. And I just feel that Nathan, when he um, won in the World Series in, in America, then he's won the UK, UK Open. And then that's confidence. Winning is confidence. Losing is, is bad confidence. You know, the, the very, very um, small line be where you really feel great, I feel I can win, or I'm not playing well enough. It's, it doesn't take much to get dealt back in the mind. But these sort of players, Dimitri, to me, he seems to play better on the stage than he does on the floor for some reason. Maybe I think, I think these players have got to start looking at themselves and saying, look, why, why don't I do the same on the floor as I do on TV or the other way around? They've got to try and look and try and find a reason because the thing the darts with now is it's great to have good runs. And obviously, if you do really well in the world, then that's brilliant. But there's a lot of these tournaments on the floor where there's money that can help your ranking. And so the, the, these younger players have got to really you know, make their minds stronger and try and be better in getting results and find the reasons why sometimes they're not getting the good results. As well, last one from us. Raymond's obviously retiring in three months. We ain't going to see him twice more on TV. It's not been the fairy tale goodbye that he wanted. Do you think maybe he went on one year too many? When he lost to uh, Lavanalskis at the Worlds last year in a fairly lacklustre performance, was that maybe the right time to have gone? Um, I think it was, yes. I think the, the, the reason is as well that Raymond's not played in all the events this year. I think if you're going to do one more year, you've got to play in everything and keep the sharpness. See, this is the thing, match sharpness. People can say, oh, yeah, but I played last weekend. You've got to keep playing under pressure all the time. And you can see that even even like Gary, look, Gary's been one of our greatest, Gary Anderson, one of our greatest players ever. Gary's not played as much. His sharpness is not as much as it was. 
and this is what happened. So I think with Raymond, it's I mean he's been great for the sport. Uh, he's been one of the most popular dart players ever. And there will be. I mean the fans, Barney Army, it's great. But I think uh, you know it, it's come. So I think when I was speaking to Phil Taylor the other day, when you think the way Phil left, won the match play, lost in the final of the Worlds, that's a great way to go out because. You can't say, well, he's gone, he's finished because he wasn't good enough to me. If he came back now, I'd still put him in the top four in the world. I just think, you know, he's that good. And uh, I just feel that Raymond should have maybe sort of said, right, I'm going to go out. I've, I've enjoyed or gone out after the Premier League might have been best because he, you know, he, he didn't play well in the Premier League. And I think now it's a sort of people say, well, should he be in something else? No, if he's not, if he's not made in the, if you're not in the rankings, well, then you get picked. You shouldn't be in, that's it. You know, it's not fair to the other players that are coming up, that are putting all the hard work in, that are going to all the events. They should then be in all the tournaments before a player to say, well, he's been a great player, which he has, and he's been brilliant for our sport. But I think, you know, he'll, he'll enjoy uh, retirement from tournaments. I think he'll do a lot of stuff with Phil Taylor. That'll go maybe around the country or maybe around countries. And I think people will like to see that. I think I'm playing in four um, world champion nights and uh, with Raymond and uh, Bob Anderson, Dennis Priestley. So I think we're going to the Stadium of Light and um, Southampton Football Ground. So I look forward to that. But I've got to start, see, I've got to start practicing for these because I don't want to get hammered by Raymond and some of these other players. So you've just got to put the work in. But being brilliant, Phil Taylor, to me, the best ever still in my book. And you know what they've put, what they've done for our sport is the reason why it's so popular today. Just touching on what you said there as well about you've got to put some yards in. I think if it was done properly, is there a market? And would you like to see a competitive seniors tour then? I think we could do one. I mean, I see on Twitter all the time. Why don't I mean when we done the Santanta on the Legends, we had all the venues full up. All right, not as big as the arenas, but we were getting you know 800 to 1,000 people. Even all the players were coming along. The top players, they were coming along to watch us. And I feel, I just don't, I mean, I understand golf because golf, it's uh, when they're 50, they're still coming off the tour. And, you know, they, they, that works really well. I've seen snooker without disrespecting to the snooker guys. Some of the names there, I don't even know who they were. They're, and they're playing in a, like, a sort of like a Legends snooker. Darts, you could put 16 and everyone will know all the players. And, you know, if I was to, if there was one, I would start playing three hours a day, four hours a day practice. I would get back to a routine because you don't want to let yourself down on TV, if it was on TV. I think it could be on TV. I don't understand why not. I mean, when you look at the players we could have, Phil Taylor, all right, Raymond, if he's not playing any more tournaments, Dennis Priestley, yourself, Bob Anderson. I mean, there's, you know, there's really good players. Peter Manley, there's loads of players you could, you could put in and that would sell tickets and it, it would be a good standard no doubt about it you know that these boys would practice hard for it because in the day it's pride Keith it's an absolute pleasure talking to you here at the City West in Dublin thanks very much for coming off the golf course and talking to us as always mate thank you very much thanks Phil